In the past week, many in the administration have implied that because uh, they have briefed the Congress and this committee that we're all complicit in the use of these surveillance tactics. Can you acknowledge here this morning that your briefing, me and my staff, does not constitute our assent or agreement to these programs? I, I, the uh, briefings that have been, continue to be provided to Congress is to inform Congress of how these programs are being applied, to what end they're being used, uh, and uh, in order to uh, establish a dialogue as to what, if any, changes need to be done to these programs, but also in furtherance of the Congress's role as the oversight body. Uh, and consequently, I, I don't think we look at the briefings as uh, a form of agreement in any way, shape, or form, but look at the briefings as our obligation to inform Congress as to what is happening. So if Congress wishes to take steps to change a, the particular statute and the applica applicability of a particular statute, then Congress takes the steps to do that. Uh, the public's understanding of this program is that the government collects these records. Uh, let's take the Verizon system. Uh, and they collect the, the records of every person in the United States and retains them for some period of time and then queries a massive database when it has a specific concern about one of us, any one of us. Is, is that understanding accurate? Within broad parameters, yes. Uh, but let me make two points if I could. The first, uh, the, the particular databases of metadata has no content whatsoever. We have no authority to get content. What that, uh, that uh, uh, the statute we believe and the FISA court has allowed is the accumulation of metadata. That is the fact of a telephone call, the numbers called, and the time of, and length of those calls. And there are cases that, where that has been instrumental in identifying uh, individuals who sought to harm our country. Yes, I, I, know, I know that, that, that the content isn't kept. But to have that information of who called whom, the uh, length of time, uh, probably where the parties were, do, do we need, does that serve any real purpose? I mean, is, is that, this puts everybody in the United States of America uh, subject uh, to this kind of, of uh, con content. We've, we, we, we have a feeling, at least some of us, that it's, it's not necessary, nor does it serve a legitimate legal protective service. Would you indulge me? Uh, because I, I, I want to go back to uh, what occurred in 9-11, uh, and which has some bearing on this. Uh, in, uh, before 9-11, uh, there was an individual by the name of Khalid al-Midar uh, who uh, came to be one of the principal hijackers. He was being tracked by the intelligence agencies uh, in, the, in the Far East. They lost track of him. At the same time, the intelligence agencies had identified a, an al-Qaeda safe house in Yemen. They understood that that uh, al-Qaeda safe house had a telephone number, but they could not know who was calling into that particular, uh, that particular safe house. We came to find out afterwards that the person who had called into that safe house was al mithar who was in the United States in San Diego. If we had had this program in place at the time, we would have been able to identify that particular telephone yes. number in San Diego. I'm almost out of time. I understand, but I ask indulgence just to finish because it's a critical point as to why we have this program and yes. how important it is. All right. If we had 
uh, the telephone number from Yemen, we would have matched it up to that telephone number in San Diego, got further legal process, identified Al Midhar. One last point. The 9-11 Commission itself indicated that investigations or interrogations of Al Midhar, once he was identified, uh, could have yielded event evidence of connections to other participants, participants in the 9-11 plot. The simple fact of their detention could have derailed the plan. In any case, the opportunity was not there. Well, if we had had this program, that opportunity would have been there. Uh, Mr. Chairman, let, let me just finish. I'm, I am not persuaded uh, that, that that makes it okay to collect every, every call. Look, the Verizon system, how can the government collect information on all of the Verizon system if the statute limits the government to those records that are relevant? If, it's, if they're relevant, that relevant under your interpretation means that uh, anything and everything goes. And that's what you did in, in the example that you just gave me.